Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is an interview with John Paul Keefe and our Molly Whitehorn with Professor Charles Hughes. Um, and the date is December 1st, 2012, and this is for part of the Echoes of Memphis Coalition. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here. Um, we just start out sort of with the basics. Um, just, you know, state your, state your full name and where you're from, and if you don't mind saying uh, when, you're, when you're from, when, when you were <laughs> Uh, well, my name is John Paul Keith. Uh, I'm originally from Knoxville, Tennessee, but uh, I've been living in Memphis for about seven years, and uh, I was born uh, in 1975. Okay, so um, I know that you grew up outside of Knoxville, right? Yeah, out in, out in the middle of nowhere. Okay, so you can tell me a little bit about your childhood and what your parents were like here. Uh, well, my dad was a truck driver, and uh, we had a real, real kind of uh, old-fashioned uh, East Tennessee sort of family life, you know. Uh, uh, it's a disappearing way of life, I think. But, uh, you know, I grew up in, in a rural area, you know. And so I think that I have a different perspective on, on uh, things sometimes because of that. And my parents waited pretty late in life to have kids, so... You know, I, I was the kid whose parents were older than the other kids' parents. You know, mm -hmm. my, my parents were a little, just a little too old to be baby boomers. So I think that also contributed to me having a different perspective on popular culture than other people. You know, got I didn't hear boomer music till I was a teenager. You know, it was just you know it just wasn't played in the house. You know, like other other people my age grew up on that. I didn't. I came to it later. I grew up hearing country music and gospel music. Cool. Um, so you ended up in Nashville, right? Uh-huh. And you played with the Vice Wars there. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about your time in Nashville and um, why you chose to leave the group? Well, the Vice Wars were actually a Knoxville band. Oh, okay. Uh, and that I would help start that band when I was 19. Mm -hmm. And uh, I quit. It was, we were, you know, the... It's like David Lee Ross says, you know, rock bands are like dogs that chase cars. They make a lot of noise and they don't last long. You know? <laughs> but uh, that's sort of, you know, it's the same old story with most ba most bands. You know, we just different directions, different uh, different uh, opinions of how it should be. So, so I took off and, uh, and then I went to Nashville and uh, I was there for about five years, I think. And they're on Steve Earls then. They were at the time. They changed their name to the V Roys when, yeah. when I left, and uh, they signed with Steve Earle. He had a label called E Squared at the time, mm -hmm. and they did a couple of records for him. Okay, cool. Um, so then you eventually ended up spending some time in Birmingham, right? Before you came to Memphis. Yeah, yeah. I was in Birmingham for a couple of years. Okay. Um, okay. It's okay. Jump in. Okay. Oh, yeah. Just to just to go back to to Nashville for a second. So when you went to Nashville, you know the it's such a common story that people who go to Nashville kind of have to fit in to the Nashville thing if they want to, you know, right. make it in Nashville. And like now it seems to be, you know, that there are some other niches that are kind of blooming there. But when you, for your experience, like were you able to make the kind of music you wanted to make in Nashville or were you sort of, did, did you find any tension because it's such a common story? Um, well, it was kind of weird. I mean, I was trying to play rock music in Nashville, and there, and there wasn't much of a scene for that then. I mean, there there were guys doing it. There were actually a lot of guys doing it, but but it wasn't. It, it didn't get much attention outside of Nashville, and it didn't, really didn't get that much attention in Nashville at the time. But but I mean, I had some luck there. I mean, I, I signed with Sire Records when I was living in Nashville. I had a band called The Nevers, you know, and Sire was a, a big you know big national major label. It was a big deal at the time and uh, so it wasn't like I got you know kicked to the curb I mean I, I had some I had some success there uh, on some level but but it what I the problem I had with Nashville is that even if you think if you go there thinking I'm not going to be like these other people I'm not going to be uh, totally corporate and and uh, uh, middle of the road and 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 uh, I'm not going to compromise what I do even if you go in thinking that because of the culture of the place after a while you still end up 
being like that, and I absolutely did that. So it wasn't that I couldn't do what I wanted to do, it's that I drifted into doing what I never would have done before, you know, and and uh, writing the kind of stuff that I, you know, would never have done. You know, it's just, I don't listen to a lot, and really anything that I did back then. I, I don't care for it, you know. Uh, so that was a problem I ran into. It's just sort of a culture thing, cultural thing there. But I think that has changed to some degree because when I lived there, there was no East Nashville scene at all. That's totally happened after I left. So now you have all kinds of things going on there. And Nashville really is, uh, you know, the recording capital of the world, and not just for country music. I mean, it, that is the recording business is in Nashville. So it's totally different now. Um, and, uh, and I learned a lot in Nashville, so I'm not completely anti-Nashville, but I am anti-Music Row, and, uh, I, and I'm 100% anti the country music industry, which I think is vile. <laughs>